Okay, we're in 3ds Max, and we're going to take a look at the um, displacement maps in Arnold. So right now I have my render settings set up for production render mode Arnold, and I'm just going to go ahead and make a couple shapes. So we'll start with a box. I'm going to create a cube, drag it out, right click to end this operation. Now with this cube, if I go into my shading mode, I can go and say edge faces and we can see how many polygons it's built out of. So when I start changing this, we'll see the update. I'm going to right click to bring that back to one by one. And I'm going to go into my modifier stack and I'm going to go into my Arnold properties and start playing around with our subdivision and displacement. So first we're going to look at subdivision. I'm going to enable our subdivision and with this, uh, by default, it's the Catmill Clark type and one iteration. So we'll just take a look at a render of this. When you render the Catmill Clark, you'll see it tries to smooth the polygon faces, and this is the result you get. So the other type is linear, and when I click on that, now it keeps its shape, but it is dividing. So for every iteration, it's going to quadrify the geometry, so it's going to times it by or multiply it by 4. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to go in and just create a material. So we're going to right click, go to material, I'm going to make an Arnold standard material. So under material, Arnold surfaces, we're going to come down and say standard surface. And then I'm going to apply it to the selection and then make it visible in the viewport. And now when we take a render, we'll just see we have that material applied. So in order to see the subdivisions that I've applied to this, we're going to right click, go down to Maps, Arnold, Utilities, and then we're going to go down to Wireframe. And I'm just going to plug this into the base color. And now when we take a render, you'll see we can see the subdivisions. So if I bring this type down to zero, we're seeing just the one polygon represented with the two triangles. And as I bring this up, for each iteration, it's being quadrified. So it very quickly becomes a lot of geometry. And you do have to be cautious. You don't get big issues with rendering and crashing your computer if you go too high. So be cautious with this. All right, so we're subdividing our surface. And the reason we're subdividing our surface is because with a displacement map, you're actually adding geometry with the displacement. So with a bump map, it gives the appearance of displacement without displacement. With this, it actually physically moves the geometry. Right now, I have three iterations, and I'm going to go and put in a displacement. So we're just going to enable displacement so we can get some you know, of a this different look to our geometry. I'm just going to zoom in here a little more so when we do a render, we're a bit closer. And select the cube. I'm going to come over here, and I am actually going to take this off soon, but I'm going to make a new map. We're going to go under the OSL maps, and I'm going to use this weave. And with this pattern, I'm going to come out of color, and this is using your luminance values. And I'm going to drag it into where it says no map. Make sure it's an instance. By being an instance, any changes I make here will update over here. And now I'm going to tell it to use this map. Now I'm going to take another render. And I still have this wireframe showing, but you can see now we have this little bit of displacement on the surface. So just to make it clearer, I'm just going to bring this up to, I'm going to say six iterations. And now you'll see we have a lot of geometry. So just remember, every time we up the iterations, we're squaring this. So again, we have a really dense mesh now. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this map. I'm just going to pull it out for now and take another render so we can take a look at what we're getting with our deformation. So right now our height is set for 1 and we have no um, pad on this. So just going to bring my height up a little bit. So we're going to bring our height to 3 and that should give me a little bit more wave. And you'll see I get a lot more noise in my geometry. So I'm going to bring this up to six iterations. That should be enough geometry just to get started. 
And again, you see I have a lot of breakup here. So I have my height, and that's how high my geometry is coming up. And let's bring that up a little bit more. Let's go to 5. And you'll see it's kind of getting cut off. It's not really forming outside of the box area. Okay. So I do have my height high enough. Um, I still need more iterations to draw this a bit better. So I'm going to go up to 8 and see if we get a little bit more smoothing. We do. But you also see that we're getting cut off at the ends of the box. And that's our bound pad. So I'm going to raise this up to 5. Now do be cautious with this because this will take more render time. And now when I raise that, it allows the object to go out further from the surface. Now we are getting some weirdness around the edges, and that's just the shape that we're getting with this. But just want to take a look at the bounce pad, and I know we're just going to see it clearer with this cube. So the other thing we didn't look at is this zero, and we'll take a look at that shortly, and that is how it's reading our black to white information. But with our subdivisions as linear at 8, we're getting um, a nice bit of height, and it's not really crisp. I can go up a little bit higher, so let's go up to 10. And after 10, it's really going to take a long time to render. Just remember you're adding more geometry as we're working. So if I put that map back on, this is going to be really dense. There's our base color. And we take a render with our wireframe. Again, it's just a very dense mesh. So it's almost completely black. So I really don't want to go beyond 10. And in order to try and get a little bit more smoothing, again, this is way too high for this to look realistic. But to get more smoothing, you can go into your UV smoothing, um, smooth tangents. Take a look to see if you get any result. And then you can pick the type of smoothing. So right now, this is set for pin corners. We are getting a little bit of smoothing on some of this. Um, you can pin borders, do a linear, or a smooth. And we'll just look at one other type. But I have pushed this beyond what I should for this texture map. OK, so that's what those are. Now with the zero value, when I right click and I take a look at my map, what this is, and I'm going to pull this down just a little bit. So let's come down to 5 and 5. So we have a little cleaner map. I'm going to have to bring up my iterations. Going up to 8 so we can get a little cleaner. Now this sawtooth, a lot of that does have to do with my map here. You can see that sawtooth, it's, it's not a clean uh, image. So part of that would be fixing the map. The other part would be going into my smoothing and, and playing with our smoothing. But what I want to show you is that with these black areas, this is where the box originally is. And when we have this set to zero, it's reading the black as the base level at zero. So it's reading it where the original box is. And if I were to change this to one, we're going to get some deformation around the edges because it's going to be pushing in instead of out. So when I render it, you'll see we're getting this penetrating of the two sides. So this is actually reading the white value as the base, and it's pushing the grays and blacks back. If I set it to 0.5, then it's using the 50% value of gray as the base level. Now, it looks bad here with this geometry, but it would look different with other geometry. So depending on the geometry you're working with, whether or not that works for you. 
something like a sphere, you won't get the same you know, inner penetration. Okay, so we're just going to bring that back to zero, which looks best for this geometry. And then below, we do have our smoothing. So we can turn on smooth tangents. Smooth that a little bit. And then we can pick a different smoothing type. So with this, it pins the corners. This pins the bounds or the borders. We're getting similar results. Uh, you have linear and then smooth. And I know a lot of our issue is our map. And here we have the smooth, but also how many iterations. So let's bring it up to 10. And you'll notice that the render time takes a lot longer. And we'll just take a look to see if it cleans it up at all. I know some of this bad sawtooth is from the map. And you'll see it is, it is cleaning it up, it is smoothing it. But again, I might need to go into this map and make my own and, and make adjustments to it or put a blur on it. So if we go into the map, we have around this value, um, our shadows, our weave, and we have a fade value. Let's generate this and take a look and see if that fixed it at all, which will take a lot longer. Yeah, I mean, it took longer. I'm getting a little bit of a difference in a couple spots, but not really. This is just actually a little bit more noisy. But that's a general overview of doing the displacement maps um, in Arnold in 3ds Max.